Welcome to Section 7, Debugging Techniques in WebAssembly. This section is all about handling the less than ideal cases that you will inevitably run into when using a new technology. What do you do when things go wrong? This section is all about tools in your toolbox to help you combat anything that might go wrong in your system. In this section, we're going to get an introduction to web debugging and look at some of the developer tools that are available to you for testing WebAssembly. We'll learn how to debug WebAssembly with source maps and interactive debuggers. We'll learn how to protect your code with debug capabilities. That way you can catch bugs earlier. We'll learn how to profile WebAssembly. And we'll finish up this section with tracing execution in WebAssembly. So let's get started. First video is exploring web debugging. If you're not a web developer by trade, you might not realize the powerful tools that exist in your web browser for debugging code. It turns out that you can't run the tools that you're familiar with in C++ world, such as GDB or Valgrind, on WebAssembly binaries. Now, you can compile your code to C++ and try to run your tools there, but there's a whole new set of tools you can use on the web. Most web browsers come with built-in debuggers and profilers, a whole bunch of tools that can be used to debug WebAssembly. You've seen me open up this console window in Firefox many times to debug in Firefox, and we're going to take a much deeper dive into these dev tools. So when we're talking about debug capabilities, we can look at an HTML inspector, an interactive debugger, JavaScript console, a network profiler, memory profiler, and we can introspect our storage. Let's go take a look at how we can do that in our Pong game. So I've started up one of my Pong games. You can grab a folder from one of the previous sections. I grabbed 6.4, where we introduced music. I'm just running it, and we're going to open up our dev console. So for those of you who haven't done it before, in Firefox, you can do it with F12, Control shift k or go through the menu to open up your web dev console. So, let's take a look. You'll see many tabs up here, some of them more useful than others, and I just want to take a brief look at some of the ones we're going to be looking at in this section. Here's our HTML inspector. You can expand tags, take a look at them. You can see how they're padded out. You can take a preview of your canvas. All sorts of things. For our Pong game, there's not a lot of good information to debug here. But if you have a lot of HTML on your page, it's very useful to use. On the next tab, we have the console. And we've been here a lot. This is where we have an interactive JavaScript console where we can go introspect objects. We can log messages to debug. You've seen this throughout the course. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. In the next tab, we have our debugger. This is going to be the focus of the next video, so I'm not going to go too deep here yet. But it gives you a way to look through your JavaScript code and put breakpoints in there. You want to halt execution, and then you can introspect variables when it stops. You can catch exceptions, you can listen to events, you can catch when the DOM mutates from you. This is great for interacting with JavaScript, but if I try to go to my WASM file, it isn't really that useful. But don't worry, we'll see how to better handle this in the next video. Moving on, in our Network tab, this is every request that our web page has made. So you can see I have a whole lot of posts here. This is showing us all the traffic that is going back and forth from our web page. So if I go click on one of these, I get a new window that appears, and it tells me some information about the request that was made. So I can see information about the request, the size of it, who asked for the request. I can see what parameters I put with the request. If you remember back to our leaderboard, we're passing two numbers representing the score. So this is telling our leaderboard we are at 50 to 0. I can see the timings of that to see how long we've been waiting on a request, how long it took to process, and we can look at a stack trace. And you'll see here that, hey, we have our mscript and fetch API being called from here. So our mscript and fetch API originated this request. It's really useful to be able to tell what functions are creating my network requests. I'm going to skip over style editor and I'm going to look at performance. We'll see this a little bit more in the fourth video of this section, but just to give you a sneak peek, this helps you record performance of how your program is being executed. So you can see what our frames per second are over a given time. 
I'm going to stop that recording performance. I can see a whole list of DOM events. We can see here that this is something related to audio. As I scroll down, you'll just see plenty more DOM events happening. Uh, this isn't the only thing I can look at. I can see a call tree. I can see where most of the time in my execution is happening. I can also look at a flame chart. And I can see a call stack of how long things were taking and in what order they were taking. So I can see some SDO audio processing happening here. You'll see a lot of these WASM functions. We'll see how to get better information in video 4. You can look at your memory through the dev console. So I'm going to take a snapshot of my memory at the moment. And I can see who's allocated what in my memory. So this is a very useful piece of information, especially if you are having trouble with memory leaks. I can also change the view from tree map to aggregate. And I can get an idea of who's taking up the most memory. So an array buffer is taking up my biggest percent of memory right now, 65% of all bytes. This is from a JavaScript perspective. We'll see in video five how we can enhance this. If I go to storage, we can see a list of all the files that we have. So we use index database as a persistence layer I can actually go look at that. So if I'm in index database for my server and slash data, I can look at the file data. And here is all of the requests it's made so far. I can see that it's storing the game score folder. I can see that it's storing my score for Pat. I can actually see the data in that file. So that's pretty cool. You can also see local storage or session storage if you need to. And that's kind of what I want to show you. The web developer tools and your browser are so powerful. Most people are only familiar with the debugger, not realizing that we have network profiling, memory profiling, storage introspection, but they could be better. So far, this has a very JavaScript lens in front of it. The developer tools understand JavaScript. The rest of this section is going to be focused on getting better information from our C++ in the web browser. And that's it from the web tools side. We're going to revisit some of those tools throughout the rest of this section.